So this is from a short story that I'm currently working on, um, centered around this, this fisherman who goes to meet with his friends at a tavern every week. Um, I scanned the circus of faces that have made this place their home tonight, but didn't see the one of my companions. So instead I made my way to the bar counter. It was a black wood felled on another island with a shattered arm. It must have been beautiful the day it was made, but when Torino found it, the paint was cracked and faded from venting as well. I ordered a limoncello, hoping it would warm my belly against the harsh weather outside. Corvino handed my drink in a glass with a tired smile. Stay warm, in the il mio amico, he said. There was only a finger or two of aqua viva in it, but that would be more than enough for me. Turning back to look for my friends, I finally spotted a sun-kissed arm waving from the back corner. I followed it down with my eyes until I saw Dante wearing his white buttoned shirt with the sleeves rolled up to his elbows. He had a few of the top buttons undone, revealing a silver necklace. It was shaped to look like a set of horns, a good luck charm. It was hardly the one. It was hardly the look one, one would expect of a royal professor. I assumed the others were there, though I couldn't see them, and crossed the crowded room to them. Ravana was the bustling capital aisle of the kingdom. With so many in need of a reprieve from a stormy day, every bar was packed to the gates. I set my glass down on the tabletop and took the only empty chair. Evo and Iveta had made it this week. They were as close to twins as they could be coming from two different fathers. Strangely, I realized that Antonio wasn't there. I hoped to collect on our wager from last week. When I asked about him, Dante scoffed. Gone off to become a bishop at Calatri, I've heard. A damned shame. We can't all be intellectuals, Iveta pointed out. She still wore her gray suit from her job in the royal government. Her short ashen hair was pristinely maintained. Everyone needs to eat somehow. I took a sip of my limoncello. It was icy for a moment before it warmed my belly and the lemon aftertaste sunk in, like a blanket against the cold wind. We got this, we always got to this part eventually, but I seem to have missed the small talk. Dante took a drink with his dark beard. It coated his bushy black mustache and foam. I know, I know, he said with a sigh. But the church? There are easier ways to improve your conditions in ways that do less harm. Besides, one moment he wants radical change, the next he's off to reinforce the status quo. I don't like it. He will only sipped his red wine, as Zibetta said. Have some empathy, Dante. We should be better than that. Though Evo's father was from Calatri in the north and his half-sister from Trevis Trevisan in the south, they looked very much alike. Both had the olive skin and black hair of the natives, but Evo's hair was mixed with blonde and Iveta with red. Being better than tyrants is not a good bar to measure by, Dante replied. <laughs> then he got that look in his eyes. It was pure hope, completely honest. I mean, something I couldn't understand at all, but he gets it. The people are growing angry. Have you seen it? He asked them. Quietly, Iveta mumbled Latin to himself. He always liked to quote the philosophers. Dante waved his words aside. The royalists don't even realize the storm brewing under their noses. The bastards. Then he looked to Abella. Not you, of course. <laughs> Thank you.